Hello YouTube. So it's been like three weeks since I uploaded. Reason being, I got a new job. Uh, by the time I get home, it's only light like an hour before it gets dark because of the time change and everything. So instead of spending time recording, I've been trying to get work done on this car. And it's also been really cold here in Indiana and really windy. So it's windy right now, which doesn't make good recording. And then I had a decent amount of video footage, um, DIY stuff going into this next video, but my phone um, took a crap. So now I have a new phone and I actually lost that footage. So I'm just gonna go over everything that I've done, where I'm at on the car. And I do have some, you know, more in depth stuff or part parts that I'm gonna put in the description that I'm gonna show. Um, my last series pretty well showed everything. So it would have basically been a repeat of what I've already done if I went through every little step again. But I'll just show you guys where I'm at and what I've done and how long it's going to be until this car runs. I'm not really sure on that yet because it really depends on the weather and how much time off or free time that I have to work on it. All right, some more parts here. Most of the fuel system, we'll start with that. My last build, I kind of messed this up because I totally forgot to mention that the spacers actually come with the injectors. So the reason why you run the spacers are because these Bosch injectors, these 100 pound injectors are shorter than factory. Um, so you gotta get the spacer to make up for it. And when you order these on B Racing's website, you select the manifold you'll be using, M50 or M54, and you'll get the, the correct spacers with the injectors. They are included. And then we'll be using the DW300 pump with the pump sleeve. This sleeve is very nice because it allows the pump to pop into the cinder unit with the rubber grommets and everything because these pumps are actually skinnier than the factory one but once you put that sleeve on there it allows it to click right in place like factory and it comes with the flex hose and plug and then a couple other things here this is off the racing's website also this is the oil feed this is for the lower banjo on the Vanos oil feed line. Um, you just replace the banjo with this and you run your oil feed to the turbo. I'll also put the oil feed link in the description, um, the actual oil feed line. And this is from B Racing Tuning. This is the HPX MAF adapter. So basically this plugs right into the factory plug of the harness and adapts it to the HPX MAF. This is nice, especially if you don't want to cut up your harness, if you don't want to do any wiring yourself, this is very convenient. Plugs right in and it grounds to the strut tower or wherever you would like to. So that's everything here. I'm going to go ahead and get these things installed and show you what it looks like installed, even though you've already seen most of this in my last build. It's just too windy to do anything, but I'll give this a shot. So I got the intercooler mounted. If you're familiar with Treadstone intercoolers, you know they have two tapped holes on each side. So I made brackets here and put two bolts on each end. And I used one of these studs, there's three of them. I used one right there to hold that bracket on. So here's the bracket that I made. And then there's another one there. I did have to cut the bash bar to get enough clearance here so that it doesn't rub the intercooler. And then for the cold side, I did a 90 like last time. And then a 90 intercooler pipe up to a 90 behind the headlight. And then the MAF, I do not have this 90 on here yet. But once you put that 90 on there, all you do is complete this with a 45 coupling. And this is a good example of what you can do without welding all this. Um, I have a bead roller now, so I can actually roll beads on the aluminum piping once I cut them to keep these from blowing off and keeping the clamps on. And I'll go ahead and show this while I'm up here. This is the inline fitting here for the lower radiator hose that has a barb right here. It's hard to show. You can see it there. For the cooling line that runs down to the turbo, you can see there. And then while we're up here, I'll show the injectors are installed with the injector caps that come with these injectors from B Racing. As you see, I didn't even have to space out 
the actual fuel rail or anything it fits perfect and then icv is deleted and these are epoxied shut so that you get that big rail off there because that basically eliminates like eight vacuum leaks because you have six o-rings in here and then you have a fitting here and a fitting here so it gets rid of all of that and then i haven't hooked up the oil feed yet i gotta do that i showed that fitting um last clip there and i showed the injectors and stuff last clip and if we go underneath here i did the intercooler piping a little differently than my last build i still have the 45 right here it is clearing the steering rack and i have the offset coupling back there coming out of the turbo to go over the subframe and then it goes into a 45 and then a 90 coupling and back to the hole you don't have to weld all this together um, i used my bead roller on all these pieces to help keep these clamps from blowing off you want to do that obviously or you're going to be losing couplings every time you hit boost so if we come back here to the turbo this turbo actually had a tapped hole for a fitting for the wastegate my last one did not so that's nice here is my drain setup it's hard to get on camera I did not weld on here. Um, I used epoxy with a nut on the inside of the pan and I used epoxy also to keep that nut from ever backing off or falling off in the pan. And then I used the Eaton hydraulic return hose like I did last car. This is the best hose to use for this. And then I welded my stainless 90 onto the housing for the wastegate. And I don't have the wastegate on right now, but I've test fitted it and I can still put the skid pan under the, the belly pan under the car. And then these are the nice PTFE coolant lines, uh, crimped, pre-crimped already with banjo bolts. And up here on my oil feed is the banjo uh, fitting that allows it to be at a 90, a tight 90. So it does not hit the turbo manifold and then I just use the 90 side of the oil feed line to go straight up. And this is a V-band, um, and this it has the T51 mod in it, so it should sound really cool. And then, of course, the 90 elbow off the turbo with the offset coupling that I was just talking about. This is all the same, same way I did my other car this is a nicer turbo it's a bigger turbo and it has the mod so it should sound like a jet taking off um but the coolant lines the drain and how i'm doing the wastegate and stuff is all the same you guys have already seen all this in video so i'm just updating you on all this and then for the other coolant line it's just a banjo 90 in the block and then this is looped like this because my intake will go underneath of it so it'll be up like that i could also go underneath the intake if i wanted um, i'm not sure which route i'm going to go yet ideally you could go underneath because it would help pull it away from the turbo manifold up there oh gosh what else we got here um currently i was working on the pipe for the intake the air filter um, all it is is a three inch pipe you do want to oval the midsection here so that you get more clearance and you're far away from the turbo manifold so that's kind of where i left off um, before i continue working on the intake i'm going to go ahead and install the fuel pump that i just showed you guys in the last clip um, i have the back seat out i'm going to go ahead and pull out the cinder unit and get this together and i'll show you what it looks like all fitted up this should have everything in it to make this happen so if you don't solder anything it does come with crimp connectors which are totally fine just make sure they're not touching each other when you put it in the car because i've seen the fuel um, make the crimp connector soft and they'll actually start to stick to each other and they can ground out which it will just blow a fuse but um, you still don't you still don't want to take that risk before i remove this fuel pump out of this sleeve here i'm going to talk about why this sleeve is so important 
for a better example to the people who don't understand this yet. Um, yeah, you can install this and zip tie it to the center unit and do all that crap, but you want this to sit in the same position and have the bushings and movement just like stock pump does. There's a reason they did this, so try to copy it. And this is what this allows. So you can see this little lip here, and that is right here on this pump. And it clips, these three clips here, pop over it and hold it. And then you have a tab here, here, and here that pop onto these three rubber bushings. So this will all set it in the same location as stock pump and allow for movement. That is what you want. And you want to use these corrugated flex hoses. They're PTFE, they're way better than rubber. They don't kink. Rubber will either kink or blow out and you are gonna have issues and you're gonna chase them, chase them, chase them. Then you're gonna find out that it's inside your gas tank because you have a hole in your rubber hose. Yes, hoses that come with some of these kits say they're rated for fuel, but they're not really meant for being submerged in fuel because they will deteriorate and blow out. So this kit right here is awesome. I got this off of B Racing's website, of course, and it comes ready to go. You will have to order the sleeve separately from them, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this pump out of this bracket here and put it together to show you guys how nice this is. All right. I got it all together. Everything fit perfectly. And the crimps that came in the kit were actually shrink type. So if you put a heat gun on them, they'll shrink down like shrink tubing. And a tip for this corrugated hose, you may want to heat the end that goes up into the center unit. You just want to heat it a little bit with the heat gun so it goes over the barb. And then once it cools off, it'll grab. Um, it's nearly impossible to slide that on there without heating it. This side here, I just used the assembly lube that came in the kit to press it onto the pump, but it's all together. I already test fitted it once, fits perfectly, so I'm gonna go ahead and install it for good. Now that I have the fuel pump installed, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on some intercooler piping. The cold side here will be completely done once I make this 90 coming out with auto body. It sounds easy, but I keep the ICV. So I have to put a fitting in here. I'm gonna weld a weld on aluminum barb in here, a three quarter. And I'm also gonna show you guys my bead roller. I know a lot of people probably know what those are, but I don't have a lot of fancy tools. So I think it's like awesome. Um, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about since that's what I use on most, most of this intercooler kit. And for people that don't plan on welding all of their piping together and plan on using some couplings, uh, you may wanna invest in one of them. So all I did was cut a 90 out for this and just make sure it fits, leave enough room to be able to get a hose clamp down there by the throttle body and on the pipe. And then I will be completing this with a 45 right here. This is how I did my last build. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the bead roller. So here is the bead roller. Um, don't mind my cheap rusty vise. Uh, it's very self-explanatory, but I don't know why I didn't have one of these three years ago. All you gotta do is put your pipe in there tighten down this top part, which I would show you if I had a cameraman. Um, tighten down that top part and then crank it. And you'll get a near perfect bead all the way around here to help keep your coupling from blowing off. Now, I need to clean up the inside of this pipe yet, as you can tell. Um, I'll get that once I roll these beads. So there it is with the beads on it. Looks like the intercooler kit when you order them. I mean, that is perfect way better than trying to use a crimper or welding all the way around there. Saves a lot of time, looks great. Got one on each end. And now I just gotta figure out where I need to drill my hole to put the barb fitting for the ICV. Well, of course it's getting dark on me out here, um, but this is the idea. Uh, try to get a 45 on that so it runs right into the ICV. And I use the M50 tube that goes from three quarter to one inch and it already has a 90 bin in it, so I can go up at a 45 and it 90s into the ICV. So this is just, you know, a quick way of making this. I have to take weld it yet, but I'm gonna wait till it's light tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna work on a diesel valve since I can do it inside 
and show you guys the rebuild kit that's getting used and everything and then i'm gonna end the video there all right this video is all over the place if my old phone didn't die on me this video would have been laid out way better um but you know my icloud is full because whose isn't so i do not have that footage uh let's go ahead and talk about this diza diza valve however you may pronounce it um, if you're an e46 owner you probably know what this is unfortunately um, a lot of people don't even know this thing exists and they like to fall apart on them and that is why you do this rebuild kit um, i recommend doing this even if you are na and not boosted because these flaps like to get stuck shut where they don't spring back anymore because of the crank and mechanism in here um, you can see that white plastic piece that is the crank uh, and they like to drop this pin eventually, this metal pin right here, and it'll just grenade your motor. So, NA or not, do this. Or get a fresh one. If you want to spend the money, you can get a new diesel valve. Do not get the eBay ones. Get an OEM diesel valve. And honestly, if you're boosted, that would probably be good enough for a while. Um, but I wouldn't be using your 20-year-old uh, diesel valve, diesel valve, uh, if you're going boosted because it's going to be seeing a lot more pressure and may cause this pin to come out easier. I don't know. I'm not going to try it. So this kit is on eBay and Amazon. This is a billet aluminum flap with a billet aluminum crank instead of plastic. And this is not a pin. This is a cap screw Allen bolt that runs all the way through it and is threaded right here so that this pin can't fall out as part of this bolt all the way through the flap. And I have to look at the instructions on all this again, but it comes with everything you need and this wire tie. Um, I guess that's probably for a peace of mind. I have to see. Um, I'll go ahead and put this thing together. Most of you guys probably know how to rebuild one of these. Um, so I'm not going to show it all. Plus, I don't have a cameraman. I'm using that excuse once again. And I'll just go ahead and put it all together and let you guys know how easily it went and if this kit is worth it. All right, I'll definitely put the kit that I used. There's a lot of knockoffs of this kit, but this is one of the good branded kits. Um, you don't want to cheap out on something like this. Super easy. Um, half the parts in that kit were just for insulation, like that bread tie and that uh, wood screw that you see in that lag bolt is for disassembling it and stuff. You do not use that. All you're gonna use is that flap, that really nice titanium bolt that goes through there and your retaining clip and then this O-ring. But it works great. Try to show here. Springs right back where it needs to be. And if you wanna test these, you can hold your finger over this hole right here and well, close this flap, hold your finger over this hole, and if it holds, that means your diaphragm and stuff is good. Um, that's another thing that can go bad on these. This one is fine. And you have to tear out the old O-ring, which is kind of a pain because they're actually not a O-ring. They're kind of just like a molded piece that's in there. Um, but this works out great. I would recommend this if you plan on going boost. I would recommend this if you've never had your Dizza valve out. Uh, just do this because you really don't want that pin to go. There's no pin here anymore. Deletes it. And I trust that bolt way more. Thanks for watching, guys. I know there wasn't a lot of hands-on in this video. Hopefully, you got some knowledge from it. It's a lot of repeat information. But the reason I'm still showing this car, even though I just done a build series just like it, is because there's a couple little changes here and there. And I needed to update some information that I may have said wrong or may have changed since the last build. Um, I'll try to get all the links in the description. I know I'm kind of slow with that sometimes. I say it in the video, but then people look and there's no links. Um, I have to go through all my purchase history and, and copy those links and put them in my description. So sometimes I upload the video before I do that. Uh, sorry about that. But make sure to comment and subscribe. I'll try to get a video up a little sooner. I know it was like a 24 day vacation there between videos. I apologize, but just with the time and the daylight, I just don't really have a lot of time to record because as you can see, it's already getting dark behind me and I just got home to make this outro. So thanks guys.